From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The University of Pretoria's Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment and Information Technology boasts a Kumba Mining Virtual Reality Sensor, providing benefits in virtual and augmented reality in mining research and education. Tasneem Bulbulia expands. Located in the university's Hatfield campus in Pretoria, the center caters to students in the Mining Engineering Department. UP Mining Engineering Department Senior Lecturer Yanni Maritz outlines what the center entails. So the Mining Engineering Department offers this facility, which consists of a lecture hall, which sits about 75 um, students. Then next to that we have a theater with an 8 meter wide, 4 meter high screen. We project 3D footage to the students, so typical mine designs, layouts and plans. And then next to that we have the full 360 3D immersive environment, the cylinder, where we then immerse the students in the environment of the mining plans. The floor was inaugurated in 2015 and then since then we had developed a few models that we show in the showcases. But since then the VR, the mobile, mobile sets has advanced dramatically and we are now focusing moving away from the, the static non-scalable to the scalable mo mobile sets. In our mining engineering department we have 128 students from first to final year. Depending on the class sizes it ranges from about 50 to about 10 in the final years. And in the, so those are the typical cohort that we put through the, the center. We have the technical fields and those, those modules do offer certain, certain applications where we bring the students into the environment, showcase them, take them back to the class and show the, the theory and teach the theory side on it. So for the mining engineering student, we can expose students to dangerous environments and then showcase that to the student before tomorrow or the week after we take them in a, on a live um, mine visit and then over in that, we can talk in a safe environment, expose the students to that, and once we go to the mine, they of course know what to look for and to avoid the hazards. In training, in teaching, the more senses you involve in your, in your training, the better the retention will be. So this just adds an additional um, dimension to that. It will not replace the, the classroom environment, and it will not replace the real experimental training on site. So this just bridges the gap between the book knowledge and what's happening in the real mines. From our side, we don't develop any of the, the content ourselves because we're the mining engineering side. So we need to, need to buy content with um, developers, so software developers, we contract them in, we ask them a specific model and then they develop that for us. On the mining training side, so the mines have a lot of money for themselves, so they try to develop content for themselves which is site specific, where we as we go out, we try to find generalized application and therefore we need to build some of those content together. So we can see the development of this content as typical old age web design where you want to have something that sells socks, you build a website that sells socks and then you have to build a new website that sells cars. But these days if you want to buy something, you just, build, you just use the website and you can sell anything on that. So the XR is in the same space, we still need to develop a specific application for a specific outcome and if you want to do something else, it's going to be a new application. Maritz also touches on sponsorship and funding for the center, as well as expansion options. So Kumba was the, the main sponsor back in the day, 2015, when it was erected. And since then, there were some other, other major companies, mining companies, that also partnered, partnered with us for some research chairs and some development and projects. Our department, running the, the system, there's of course annual, annual maintenance that needs to go onto the bulbs of the projectors. And these, these, that's quite extensive, but it's from the capital department, of capital budget from our department, we then source those funds and make sure that we maintain it accordingly. And then as the hardware also age over time, we try to get some extra funding from our budgets and from our department external sources to fund some new, or new, new purchases. We learned in our teaching space here, we rolled over to the health sciences faculty. So they are now embarking on a on a big drive using the XR in their, in their faculty and their departments. Scalability, of course this environment is quite expensive to set up and it is a niche environment. Whatever gets developed for these screens can only be shown on these screens. So every time you want to roll this out to some other um, visual or other projectors, it needs to be rerun on that sense. So the physical space, it's not scalable at all. And then the mobile sets, of course, it is much more affordable and of, of course also mobile, where you can take it out to site, you can teach much more people with the same amount of money, the capital investment. Maritz also expands on training elements. Firstly, on the VR orientation, 
yes, definitely we need to teach the students because the moment you put on the headset, it's a different environment. You first need to know how to use the controls, typical teleportation, how to move longer distances because your track space is only a certain dimension. Once you go, want to be, go beyond that, that dimension, of course, you have to teleport or jump longer places. So there's some orientation, some controls that you need to teach the students. Once that, once that is done, they know all of that, then the in-app application and the knowledge can be taught to them, which is maybe flicking between the, the photos or moving the instruments in that. The English training. So our English contingent is from the first year to the final year, we have um, English lecturers, which assisted from the technical side we do the training as the mining engineers, but they help with, uh, with the grammar and the English speaking in written English just to make sure that we get on, this, on the right elevation or right standard, right, right level of English. Of course, the environment, the teaching environment, also the, the industry environment is the English driven environment, the industry. We need to make sure that even students which is not first language English can at least communicate um, technically sound. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.